Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics and welcome back to World Tour 2024 where I am going to show you some great cars of the world. Well today we went over to Germany and we are going to take a look at ICM's Opel Admiral with open cover. This is a World War II German passenger car molded in 124 scale and a really cool fantastic kit. Just check this thing out. I'll try not to get too much light reflection going on here. So anyway, without further ado, let's go down to the bench and take a look at this amazing car. And now we'll go all the way back to Germany in 1938 with the Admiral Open Top Cover World War II German Passenger Car by ICM. Here we can see it is molded in 124 scale and this just looks stunning. What an amazing vehicle. On this side of the box, we get the amazing front view, side view, and end view of this great German car. And on this side of the box, we get a wonderful write-up, which I will transliterate down in the description below, as well as the barcode. And this says that the model is for the adult collector age 14 and over. And on the bottom of the box, we get some wonderful 3D printed images of the top and bottom of the car as well as the front three quarters with the hood off and the opposite corner with the hood and the grill and headlights off as well as a front three quarter top and front three quarter opposite angle top the undercarriage and the back so now let us open up the box and this opens up quite interestingly there is a flap on the bottom which unfolds and then if i can avoid the top of the camera <laughs> There is the lid of the box opening up. And now let's see if I can just move this out a little bit. There we go. So in this bag consists ooh, all the parts of this kit with one big pull. These bags are nice because they actually have the uh, plastic pull on here. So you can open it up and reuse the bag, crinkly as that is. And here we have the instructions for our car as well as the decals. Oh, and they actually do give you something of the past in here. Let's just put it that way. So what I'll do is I'll clear this all out of the way, and then we can look at our wonderful Opel Admiral. Here we have the instruction sheet for our ICM 124 scale Admiral, and these were cars that were made in 1938, but then when the war started in 1939, the cars were commandeered and given to officers of the Wehrmacht and the Luftwaffe. So that is the basic history of this. So down here we have a bunch of the specs on the car, as well as the paint callouts and the cautions here on when you glue your model together. As we open our instruction sheet, we are confronted right away with a parts tree pullout. And what we have is part tree A, B, C, D, E, F, G being the tires, H being the glass, and J being the top. It's interesting to note that we do have these orange highlighted parts. And if we look over here, it says that these are the parts not in use on this kit. It, there are also a box here that has a X and a 2 in it, and that is for making two pieces. There's a question mark for optional pieces. And then this one I find really interesting, an asterisk, and it says scratch build. So I wonder what that will entail. Before we continue with this unboxing, I just want to share something with everybody. This is the very first time I've opened up this model kit at all. I wanted to keep this whole thing like a secret from myself, because I wanted to have some surprise in my voice and I wanted to go through this with you as if it was your first time looking at this kit too, because it probably is. And that's why I'm going through all the instructions and everything. And uh, you'll have to forgive me if I don't know what some of the pieces are in this kit, because yeah, I know a lot about cars, but I don't know everything about every single car on the planet. And I haven't researched every single car on the planet because I'm trying to get these videos out every Friday. So that doesn't give me enough time to do this sort of thing in between work and everything else. Not that I'm making excuses, this is just the way it is. So what we have here is the instructions and just looking at this I can see that it isn't really going across with the numbers. It's sort of going like this through the instruction sheet. 
So I'm going to have to go through and really look at the numbers to see how this all goes together. So what we have here is right and left hand side engine blocks in step one with the valve cover going up on the top and the oil pan down below. And then we drop down to panel two and you can see this is the completed step for panel one. So now we're adding in a distributor cap onto the distributor. We also have this item here which I'm not sure what that might be. It could be a breather for the valve cover. Down here, this looks to be maybe an uh, oil pump. And here we have a fuel pump. And then we have a timing chain cover going on the front. We've got our upper and lower radiator hose, as well as this piece here, which could be another one of those drain overflow pipes. Oh, sorry, oil pressure overflow pipe sort of thing. And then here we have in step three, another part that I'm not familiar with what it is, and it looks like it goes on top of the valve cover. So it could be a breather cap, which, or a filler cap for the oil, one of the two. Then here we have our air cleaner, our carburetor, our intake manifold, exhaust manifold, starter motor, generator, belts, and the fan. And all of that will go together to complete the engine. Now we're dropping over at this angle into step four. And here we have what appears to be the, well, it's the wheels and tires, of course, but I'm just trying to think, is one of them the front and one of them the back? Or what are they doing here? But basically, actually, you know what? This looks like left and right hand side. The artist actually drew right-hand side and left-hand side tires in these instructions. That's interesting. I haven't seen that before. So we've got a tire here, the wheel going in, and this is the hubcap. And then if you turn it around, there's the tire, the wheel, and the hubcap going in this way, right and left-hand side. Who would draw that up? So in step six, we have the differential being glued together. Now it is in two halves split down the middle with the front pumpkin pointing forward and the back cover toward the back, of course, obviously, right? So then we have this multi-piece frame in here. And this is really interesting the way they've done it. So you have a frame outer and then these two inner pieces that are going in. And there's a lot of holes drilled in it and that is to lighten up the frame which is quite interesting, almost like a race car sort of thing. And then we've got a cross brace going into the back and one up at the front of the frame horns. We also have our steering box right in here. And we have these interesting shock absorbers, I do believe these are. Either that or they're just a support bracket, but they, I think they're shocks because they're tying in on the top of the frame and they're latched in at the bottom on the leaf springs. So this must articulate much like a lever type of arm as this is going down the road to keep the, you know, to act like a shock, shock absorber. In panel eight, we can see our front suspension being assembled. And what we have is the cross brace in the front. And then we have our suspension components here. And again, a front shock absorber or a lever going in and being mounted onto this piece. And then we also have our tie rods here for the steering. So again, quite a different way of steering a front car than what we're used to over here in North America. Now I'm just gonna slide the instructions down a little bit because there's a lot to see here. So now we have our completed front suspension being glued up on the bottom of the frame. We have our tie rod here, a connecting rod, going into the bottom of the steering box. Then over here, we have some hooks going on the ends of the frame. We have our um, drive shaft here connecting to the rear differential. And at the end of the transmission with our engine going into the frame and our two piece radiator being assembled. Then if I move the instructions further down, we can see the beginning of our interior. So here we have the front of the seat and the back of the seat, as well as the top. This could also be that towel bar that they have. And then this should be the back seat. And there's the back of the back seat being glued in place. Panel 12 shows our dashboard being glued together into the cowl. So the body panels on this kit are pretty much separate from one another. It's not one complete shell. It's uh, many panels, much like the early Ravel kits were. 
So just going through this, we've got the front cowl, we've got the windshield, we've got a rear view mirror being glued in place. We have this amazing piece, which I'm not sure what that is either. But we do have the dashboard down here, and there is a decal location going in here. So we get decals for the gauges. We also have the lower steering column, the banjo-style steering wheel arms, and then the outer ring of the steering wheel all glued together. And then here we have a little uh, lever or something that gets glued to the bottom of the dashboard. Now that could be for the heater or in some cases, it might even be a lever for the parking brake. Uh, now, down here, we have the back trunk panel being glued onto this pan. And this pan includes our rear fenders, as well as the front inner fender aprons. We have our pedals here, so this would be a standard car. So we've got a clutch, a brake, and the gas pedal, as well as the shift lever right here. And then moving this panel down... We have our windows, front and back, and the side panel also includes the front fender. So this is really a unique way of building a model car. I just hope it all goes together well in the end. If you've built one of these, let us know in the comments down below how it worked out for you. Okay, getting back to this, we have the inner door panel, and look at all the little window cranks and door latches and knobs and even armrests that are all being glued on here. And then we even have that vent panel that goes in on the floor. Much like my 72 Oldsmobile, there's a panel pretty much like this right as you open the door and just inside a little. In panel 15, we have the sides being glued onto that panel. And again, take a look at this. this there's that whole back end all together. We also have this little plate that gets glued right in there beside this. Oh no, I guess it would get glued on. So we have louvers in here, and these little plates get glued over top of the louvers on the opposite side where the tire would be. So here we have our right and left hand side panels being glued in, and we also have the door handles being glued in as well. One nice thing about the way they're constructing this is there's only going to be like a little gap or something here, but that's right at the back of the door. And uh, there's nothing like in the middle, like how uh, Ravel clamshelled together the uh, the uh, Pontiac Club de Mer, you know, so you're not dealing with that seam line that runs right in the middle of the body. So even though this is a multi-piece kit, they are trying to hide the uh, seam lines out of it, you know, from actually gluing the model together in numerous stages. So panel 16, or step 16, we have the assembly of the front cowl, basically the front grille area. We have these wonderful headlights that glue into the holes here. And then we have the two-piece grills being glued in. And hopefully these are open in the back. Now, here we have the hood. And it looks like you're going to have a right and left-hand side to this. And there's a wonderful piece of chrome trim, very much like a Buick in here, which gets glued right into there. And then I do believe H is a paint color probably a chrome, and that's being applied around on these little latches and whatnot. Panel 18 shows the assembly of our body to the frame, and what we have to start off with is the X frame underneath, and that'll be glued in here on this X that's way down on the body, and then uh, we would drop our frame in right into the underneath of this body pan. And here we can see we have our gas tank molded in place. So again, wonderfully done. And we've got our exhaust pipe, which will connect up to the exhaust manifold on the engine and be glued in here somewhere along the frame rails and into the pan underneath. And then our final little bit down here on this page is the top being glued together. And again, it is in three pieces. So you have the front, or the top and the back, and then the glass being glued in in behind. Now there was a detail on the box that said that this was ICM's first model kits, so maybe they made it this way because they didn't quite know how to do the tooling to make this as a one piece. Uh, why they chose to make it all separate is really up to them. <laughs> but at any rate, what we have here is this big piece of chrome, and this is actually a... Uh, 
center trim ornament and that will go right up the middle of the grill here and then along the top of the hood and up into this little plate on the cowl. And this little plate I do believe is a vent so that uh, you get cold air into the front of your car. And I do believe, now thinking about this, going back to the dashboard, remember I said there was a little lever and it might be for the parking brake? I do believe it's actually to open up this vent. Um, I have seen a few videos from my friend over at What It's Like, and in some of his cars that he's reviewing from the 40s, that is sort of the way you do it. You pull that lever and the vent opens up and you push it back in and it closes. So that is a fresh air vent before air conditioning became a thing. So what we have here are the running boards, which are gluing up underneath, and they are also trimmed out with some silver, as we see here. And then just moving the instructions down, if I may, <laughs> without getting it caught up in uh, everything that's going around here in my film booth. Okay, let's just zoom back a little touch. There we go. Thank you, cameraman, which is my hands. <laughs> okay, anyway, here we have the hood. And now you do have the choice of displaying the hood open or closed. And now you can see there's that piece of trim. So it doesn't go on top of the hood. It goes underneath the hood and the hood will sit on it. But the hood should be gapped so that there's a little piece of chrome up the middle. I think that's what they're going for here. So what we have here is a little piece of chrome that glues up here to connect the uh, belt line chrome molding. And then what would this be? Interesting component gets glued on here. I know what this is. This is the turn signals. And I do believe it's much like the early British cars where uh, it was sort of a vacuum assisted box. And when you want to turn signal on, it, they'd flip out like a little flag saying, you know, we're going this way or we're going that way. But I could be mistaken. This might be something to do with, uh, you know, getting commandeered by the Luftwaffe as maybe a mount for a certain flag, let's say. It, like I say, I'm not 100% sure on this. And then what we have here, this was another component that I do believe is part of the Luftwaffe thing. And... Uh, if you look at World War II German vehicles, they have this unit. I don't know if it's like an extra fog light or just something identifying it as a military vehicle, but it will glue on this front fender right here. Usually they're olive green. Uh, again, don't quote me on that. Look up, got to look up some history here. Maybe I can find a picture of it. Anyway, here is our license plate being glued onto the front. We also have the headlight glass being glued in and the reflector lamps getting glued into the square holes. And then we have our bumper being glued into the circular holes down below. The one thing that makes this a little bit difficult is ICM has not identified any of these parts on here. So like I said, if I get this bit wrong, it's because I, they're not listed and I just don't know it. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, what we have here is our visors, and these look like they're made out of four pieces, right and left. So you actually have the adjuster here, or not really the adjuster, the um, uh, the hinge or whatever they call it on these, the, the knuckle that goes right here, and then you have your sun visor. So this piece makes it so you can take the sun visor like let's say it's down and fold it up and also to take the sun visor and turn it this way so it's facing the side window when uh, the sun is hitting you from this angle or this angle. So that's really neat. I haven't actually seen that on any of the model kits. Usually sun visors are molded up into the top of the roofs or they're just not included at all. Then we also have these two little pins here which glue on the top and those are the latches for the hood when you got the top down. And uh, what else do we have here? We have a fuel cap. So I'm just going to move this down a little. Come on. There we go. We got the fuel cap being glued onto the back of the fender. We also have the bumper being glued in place and the license plate. Interesting that Germany is a left-hand drive when England and possibly France are right-hand drive. 
or is France left hand drive? Okay, anyway, we have our taillights being glued in place here and here. These are much like uh, the Lincoln taillights from 1948, actually. We also have the Opal logo being glued on here, as well as the trunk lid handle. And then we have, I think this is a, I don't know what that is. Is that a backup light being glued down here? Or, well, it's not a license plate thing. At any rate, it's getting glued down there. And then we have our top going on as the final straw. Here we have an illustration of the completed car from a top three-quarter down perspective. And what we have here are either, these could also be side mirrors. It's really hard to tell for me until we actually look at the parts. But again, there they are. And uh, this is much like the Bedford truck that I've done earlier where they give you this final drawing. So you could copy this and then color it in the colors you want with pencil crayons or even digitally through something like Photoshop or even uh, paint, <laughs> Windows Paint if you still have that. And just color this thing in before you actually start painting the real model. Next on our instruction sheet we have some paint color callouts. So what we have is the front view and back view of the car of course. But here they are showing a blue color for your fenders and body, and then a light gray color in here along the doors. Our next picture shows a solid black version of the car, which would be quite cool, much like the box top art. Once again, we have a solid black car, and the only real difference I can see from this one versus the one we just looked at is the license plate number, and that is different. So. The one thing I don't quite understand is why ICM didn't list what was going on here, because maybe these license plates are significant. Like this one has WH, so is that for the Wehrmacht, or what is it? Again, uh, I'm not sure. We'd have to now go and check online for history. And our final illustration of the car is from 1939 and going forward, because it has the eagle with the crooked cross down here as the flag. And here is where that scratch built symbol actually comes into play. So we have these little wires that you glue on right dead center of the fender, just dead center of the hubcap, but of course mounted on the fender. And these little pins would go up here and then you put your uh, special flag right there. And Again, we have the license plate. So here is WL. So would that stand for the Luftwaffe? I don't know. Again, like I say, it's uh, kind of hard to tell. Oh, and just looking at the back here, this one has that little plate. So that might be a military numbering badge again. And then there is that funny uh, sensor thing. That might be something to do with the radio for getting... Uh, you know, radio signals from headquarters or something to that effect. Maybe maybe that's what that's all about. I'm not 100% sure again. I don't know really what pieces they used in World War II on these. Now that we have finished dancing, we have our next parts tree here. And this is quite detailed indeed. Here we have our six-cylinder engine. And what a beauty. Look at all the nice detailing on here. Again, really cool stuff. There is our uh, cylinder head cover, as well as the oil pan. Wow, the radiator is really tiny in this car. How did it ever keep it cool? Now, check this out. The uh, way they molded this. Your steering wheel ring is completely protected by the circle. And then you've got your banjo in here for the center. That, again, is protected. And even the fan. The fan, of all things, is protected in a nice circular mold here. Circular part tree. So, bringing this up to the camera, now you can see what I'm actually looking at. And again, really wonderful stuff on there. Boy, the casting is superior. And uh, this reminds me of my French or Paris taxi that I built. Or not built, <laughs> unboxed. Still have yet to be built. But again, that was another ICM kit. And boy, the detailing on here is great. Well, even under the steering wheel, you can see the little hand grips that are molded in there. Wow. That is great. It's nice that um, they didn't do it as a one-piece steering wheel, you know, because you can really uh, paint up those parts all separate 
and then glue them together and make the uh, magic happen. Our next parts tree shows those cross members and the little inner caps on the frame rails. These were the ones that had all the holes in them. And here you can see our wheels. So only two of them have the holes going through. Again, really interesting stuff. There's the sun visors and then our tail lamps in here. We also have our differential and the front suspension. And again, this is really nicely done. Look at the, all the uh, bolts and everything on that differential. Beautiful work. Boy, oh boy, ICM, they can really knock it out of the park. Turning it over, we can see the wheel backs. This one has a little uh, button right there, whereas the other one doesn't. So again, that's interesting. That I wonder if that was uh, single action parking brake would that I don't know would that make sense maybe it does uh, again not familiar with this car but boy look at those nice holes in this for the frame all these little spring and levers just perfectly engineered just like a German vehicle next up we have a really small parts tree and this would have been wonderful if ICM had done this in chrome because here you have all your hubcaps and your bumpers as well as your grill and the trim piece. There's the hood ornament. We also have our window cranks and door latches and handles. But in gray plastic, it's not the best. If it was chrome, I would have given them full marks there. The uh, issue here is that the grills are not open. So you would have to scrape them out from the back. And it... Just based on the thinness of this, mm, I don't know if I would open them because there's nothing in here that would hold these, uh, you know, from falling out as wires. Now, the choice is up to you, of course, so you can attempt it. But I think what I would do in this case is actually just paint this black and then go on the top with chrome and uh, leave down in there black or even do a black wash, paint the whole thing chrome. Um, that's just me. Nothing personal. <laughs> it just looks really tight in there, and it looks like if you were to do something, all this would fall apart. The only thing I can suggest in that is to replace this with rod, but then make a couple of, you know, cross braces in that glue in underneath in the back. It's like one, two, three. Or try to open this up and then glue those rods in there. Just so that this has something to be affixed to, because currently it's just, you know, molded as one piece. But again, overall, this is really wonderful. I don't see any mold marks on any of the bumpers or anything significant. So kudos to ICM for making such a wonderful little parts tree. Our next parts tree includes our big frame in here. You can see why they drilled holes in it. I didn't realize how huge this frame is. So it would have been quite a few hundred pounds if uh, the holes weren't drilled in. Now here we have our seats front and rear and you can see just how thick and heavy these guys are. They would have been really comfortable back in the day to sit on. Again a luxury vehicle. And then here we have those little boxes. I think they are turn signals. One has a flag sticking out of it and the other doesn't. Or it just has like the base of the flag. So I do believe these are those vintage style turn signals that flung out and then this flag would be painted red or green or something like that. And that's because they didn't have the electric turn signal lights in the back. They were just a single brake lamp. So when you foot, put your foot on the brake, the red light comes on. That's all they did. They didn't have the turn signal in it. That came later. Anyway, here we have our dashboard. We also have the headlights. And uh, what else is going on here? There's the parts we don't use. <laughs> and uh, inner door panels. Again, most excellent. Look at how many uh, connecting points are here on the exhaust manifold. Or, pardon me, the exhaust system. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. <laughs> 11 connecting points. Now, I do believe that uh, having all those there made for the plastic to go in here you know, perfectly with no sink marks or anything, but it's going to be a bit of overkill to clip all that out. The, you guys that do the 3D printing, it's almost like breaking out every single bar in between your part and uh, what you want, you know, or your part in the runners, I guess. But again, nice detail in here. Let's turn this thing over. 
Interesting. Uh, yeah, you can see mold marks in here, though, when we turn it over. But I think where the mold marks are, they're going to be hidden. So again, really wonderful stuff in here. Oh, look at that. The headlights even have a light bulb down in the bottom. So you could uh, paint that all chrome in there for the reflector and then paint the light bulb with like a white or something to that effect. Or even just, you know, drill this through and put an actual LED in that spot would be cool. Again, awesome work. Awesome work. You should pick one of these up. So now you want to know how to build up your body like Hans and Franz. Well, here we have it. So we've got our pan down here. We also have our trunk lid. And then we have our front grill shroud area, as well as the firewall and the cowl. And then we've got our hood right and left hand side. We have our right and left hand interior. Then we have our exterior with the right and left hand side door panels and fenders, as well as our running boards down here and up there molded separately. So now you need your testers liquid glue or something similar that is a liquid glue and uh, clip all these out and then liquid glue this thing together. There we have the wonderful little louvers that are punched in the inner wheel openings. Would be cool to open this up so you could see down below, but actually I don't think it matters because those little plates go right in here, so they would be covering them. Again, wonderful detail on here. Look at the firewall. It's even got some bracing in there. Look at that grill opening. Wonderful. Wunderbar. Very wunderbar. We also have the latches. These are much like the 1949 Ford. 49 and 50 had the latch in there on the trunk lid. So if you're really good at latching, you can actually make these open just with a pin in between and you need something so that this slides into the other. It's tricky, uh, but it's possible. Uh, here's where we have a whole bunch of mold marks, but what I would do instead of filling these, or, you know, see if you need to fill these, I would try to put the frame in here and see if the frame rails don't cover those holes um, before you actually, you know, find out that the frame doesn't cover the holes and have to fill it. Maybe you can just hide it. But look at that uh, fuel cell. Boy, really nicely molded. The only thing is, uh, I think these are just supposed to be like a loop. They're not supposed to go way down in here. There'd be quite a lot of gas in this thing. <laughs> but uh, that's the only faux pas I'll give it. But still, it looks really good. And uh, you do have sink marks in there. On the fenders, on the top, you have the uh, uh, that seam there that's up in between, as if these are pinched together as a two-piece in the real car. There's also some seam lines up around here, which I think you may need to remove. But again, look at the real car first, in case that is some kind of trim element that the Germans were doing um, before you actually start removing anything. But again, that part looks really cool. Let's see the other end here, the other part's tree. So, I mean, look at the door panels. Again, really nicely done. Got all the holes in there and the little slots for your armrests and whatnot. I really like when they mold these as, you know, separate pieces instead of a tub because you can actually see what you're getting on the doors. The hood looks beautiful. Nice latches in there. Front fenders, there's a bit of flash ah, on the ends, but you can easily get rid of that. But that's the only flash I've actually seen on this kit so far. How about you guys? Did you notice anything on those parts trees? Because I sure didn't. So if that's it, I mean, that's good. Because nobody really likes to uh, be digging parts out of Flash. Flash. Oh. <laughs> uh, now there are some old marks in here, which you can easily get rid of. But again, wonderful work by ICM. I mean, these guys get top marks over here. Because, boy, they really know what they're doing when they make a model. Here we have three parts trees. And now these are everything that's remaining in the kit for plastic. And what we have is our two-piece top right here. We have our glass parts trees, as well as the tires. So let's just take a look at these all separately. Now, look at that nice roof in there. There is a little bit of the uh, plastic mixing in here, uh, basically from the plastic itself going through the parts tree. Now that's easily just painted over. It won't affect anything. I'm just kind of pointing it out. 
Now what you do have in here are three sink marks per side for a total of six. And then in the back you've got four in there. But uh, overall it looks nice. You almost have a bit of the uh, fabric stitching in here. The little piping going down on the roof. Again, really neat. I like the uh, chrome molding around the rear glass area. Very well done. Although a bit simplified. Like it could have done with the ribs being molded in underneath here. Just for a little more authenticity. But if no one's picking up your model, no one will see it. So that's okay. Now our glass is interesting because the headlight covers are completely devoid of any of that waffle pattern. You know, much like I'm always showing in these videos there. You know, headlights like this, right? That's what's missing out of here. Now, I don't know if that's uh, actually how it is on the car. It probably is. It's hard to say. Uh, these uh, headlights were oval shaped slightly, so they may have been glass, but the actual headlight down below may have had that pattern on it. I am not sure. Or it just didn't have it at all. They might have been trying out some early version of Lucas Light or something weird in there where you didn't need all that uh, cross hatching. That cross hatching is actually supposed to help the beam of light uh, travel further down the road. So I don't know what you know, smooth lights would do. Here we have some of the parking lights as well. Again, really nice and simple. We've got the no draft windows in here, so you would have to chrome foil those just in that little area in order to make it look correct. And finally, let's take a look at our tires. Now, unfortunately, again, there are no raised letters on the tires saying like Dunlop or Firestone, or what would have really been cool is if they had a German name on here, you know, like Reichland tires or something. <laughs> anyway, look at that nice tread pattern. Again, really well done in there. Here, let's see. Can you see that? Yeah, really nice. You could put white walls just by painting latex in here or acrylics or acrylic latex. <laughs> Overall, again, really nicely done. You will have to nip them off the parts tree here, and that means you need a hole big enough. because This is larger than that socket that I use and uh, use a tire spinning tool just to get that tread knocked down a bit and make it look like it's been on the road. But once again, ICM has not disappointed in how they're building this model with these wonderful components. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, here we have the Admiral Cabriolet decals, and we can see we've got four different license plates for front and back. Here we have VH0654, HB27428. Now I do believe these are the civilian license plates, but here the WH and the WL, that could be for the Wehrmacht, and this one could be for the Luftwaffe. Now here we have 308785 and WL89784. We also have the Opal lettering, which goes on the hubcaps, and down here we have the decals for the instrument panel. Now, when I first looked at these, I thought, uh, that can't be accurate to the real car. However, I did some online research of the Admiral Cabriolet, and I did find out that the instruments were actually this simple. Here you have your speedometer, and here is sort of like an odometer deal. It's got numbers 1 to 5 in here. And then this is the clock right there. And we also have some script over here. And we have this flag. This is for one of the military versions. It's got the eagle and it's carrying that crooked cross. And what you do here is you would cut out a long rectangle. And then remember the little pin that you had to scratch build? You would uh, slip the decal off the backing paper. And then right here where the little crack is, you wrap that area around the pin so that you've got like a long piece and then it folds over on itself and then right there would be the pin you know basically like folding an envelope in half and that's what you're doing with that decal
Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our Opal Admiral. And if you've built this model kit in the past, let us know down in the comments below. How did you like it? Did it go together easily for you? Or did you find some issues with maybe fit and finish? I want to know everything about that. And if you like these great videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. But hey, why not take that one step further and actually join the channel as a member? Now, members are a real special group of people. They get their name listed at the end of the video, like these people right here. And members actually get to see the video before subscribers do. So if I upload 10 videos tonight or whatever, I will space them so that, you know, each video releases every Friday on this channel. But if you're a member, you get to see that video the moment it's uploaded. Isn't that cool? Isn't that a good incentive to become a member? Well, anyway, all you need to do is look down below, click that join button and follow their instructions and you too will become a member. Now, if you want to see some other great videos of German cars, check out this one right here. And if you would like to shop at Monster Hobbies online, click this little link and that will take you directly to our store. So until next time, everybody, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next country.